I often think that the final frontier that we talk about, it, it's not up there, it's actually in here. The mind is one of the most fascinating things we can ever try to unlock. We know a lot about the brain. We, we think we know a lot about uh, how the mind works, but we don't really. We know that a lot of things are unconscious, subconscious, semi-conscious, and we're just fascinated to try to find that out. And I think psychology pushes us to understand the mind, and as a result, we'll understand a whole lot more about ourselves. Another thing that's really interesting in there is uh, psychology really forces you to ask questions about things. Uh, many of my students, by the way, are, are frustrated by that because there aren't a whole lot of answers. But I really want you to frame questions properly. And for me, that is the most fascinating thing of all. Psychology is often confused with psychiatry. Big difference is a psychiatrist has a medical degree. A psychiatrist has gone through medical school first and not a, a heavy program in psychology. And consequently, one of the big differences is in therapy, a psychiatrist can actually give drugs out, whereas a psychologist cannot. Now, if you were to say to me, uh, who's the better person to see? I'm going to say, go to a psychologist, because a psychologist has many more weapons, if you want to put it that way, in their arsenals, so that they can go ahead and choose a therapy that's best for you. Uh, in my opinion, a psychiatrist is kind of really drawn into the tradition of the medical model and will go that way first. A psychologist may explore something else. You know, it's, in it's interesting that when I started university, I was going to be a chemist. I really, really loved chemistry. In high school, I did all my chemistry, did all my physics, did all the math. I went to university. I took physics, chemistry, math. And for a whim, I took psychology because I thought it would be, you know, kind of interesting. End of first year, I hated chemistry. Chemistry was dull, boring, methodical. Math was okay. I kind of kept on with that a little bit. Physics, mm, I didn't quite get it. Psychology, though, the thing that I took just as an elective because it sounded cool, turned me on. And I think that that's the most important thing that a student can do. What is it that turns you on? What speaks to you? If that material speaks to you, you take that and don't care about anything else. You go for that because in the end, that will drive you all the way through. So there's a lot of biology in psychology. And sometimes we find that a hard thing to do because you think you're taking a bio course. I'm going to talk about the brain and how the brain works and how the sensory systems work. We even look at you know neurochemistry and all kinds of things like that. And you wonder why. And a lot of students are kind of freaked out by it because they haven't taken a lot of bio. But you see, the answer is I can't explain schizophrenia to you if I don't explain how a schizophrenic's brain works. And at least we can understand that in something like schizophrenia, you can really see what's going on because for a schizophrenic, everything is real. Their brain is telling them that it's real. And so we need to study that and understand how the brain works and it informs us in that kind of way. And you know, it's, consequently, we've got a lot of biology. Second thing that I find that students find troubling is you gotta have math. And you know, why should you have math for psychology and all of that stuff? It's, it's because we need statistics. It relates to some of the other things I was saying and that is psychology is not an exact science. It's probabilistic. I'm gonna to explain to you things in terms of how they might happen or how likely it is to come that way. As a result, you gotta understand probability and statistics and that'll all come together, but unfortunately for some, you've gotta do it. It will make sense to you. People find it frustrating, but it all becomes clear. The uh, opportunities in psychology are amazing so that not only can you go on to study graduate school or take graduate programs in psych, uh, it could be a master's level, could be a PhD, but if you just wanted to go out into the working world, for example, what you would find is that you could work as a statistician. You could uh, do things where you had to be a research assistant, uh, assistant and uh, deal with number crunching. Those are the kinds of things that you hated learning all, you know, all the way along, but now you know how to do them. The other thing that uh, I think employers find incredibly fascinating is when you've studied psychology, you've studied a lot about human behavior. And so you know some of that stuff now. You know how people work in groups. You know how people talk to one another. You might even know how to persuade individuals. That's a really important um, thing out there in, in the work world. And you're going to find that that's very important for you. So it opens up a lot of things that you never thought of apart from helping people, treating people, working in a clinical setting, and, and those sorts of things. It's very important for living.